It's time. Time to get credit for the work you've done. Time to get the recognition you deserve. With Purdue Global, you can move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself. You're worth the investment in yourself to earn a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will respect. Purdue's online university is designed to support working adults like you who know it's never too late to accomplish your goals. It's never too late to make a comeback. It's time to start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 56, Saving for Kids College with Abby Chow of College Backer. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Frugal Friends Podcast. Probably the last one that I will be pregnant for officially. (laughs) So Woo-hoo! I'm super warm. I am super large and I'm wearing a hat because I couldn't be bothered to shower. And so I, welcome. I love it. You don't have to because you are not on video. I am a podcaster. A yep. face for podcasting right now. <laughs> but we are talking about saving for kids college. This is a super exciting topic. One of the lesser acknowledged baby steps. Mm. I I don't even remember what baby step it is. S- five? Like six or something? Yeah, it's it's okay. along the line. Lo- it's up there. Right. So people don't think about it. So we're talking about it today. Like, where is the best place to save? What are your options? How much? When should you start? And we're talking about it with Abby Chow, who is the co-founder and COO of College Backer which is a website that you can have people donate to your kid's college fund instead of give you, like, plastic stuff uh, for, you know, birthdays. And stuff that makes noise in the middle of the night that wakes up your kid. I don't even have kids, and I know (laughs) the real life of that struggle. Like, why? Why do they make noise when you just step on them or or look at them wrong? (laughs) That's your Alexa. <laughs> that is, that is, yeah. Why did I bring this thing into my home? I thought it was yeah. going to make my life easier and entertain me. It, it, en- it entertains me when it goes off while <laughs> we're recording. True. So we are uh, super excited to have her on. But first, we're getting in with our sponsors. Okay. Also brought to you by The Poor House. Cautioning you to be wise with your money because they know what it looks like on the other side of frivolous spending and wasteful practices. Your parents always questioned if this is where you really want to send them, you know, what with all your mindless electricity use and overconsumption of food. Close that refrigerator door. The poorhouse is pleading with you today <laughs> to practice portion control. Turn off that faucet. Save for the things you want. The poor house, because they're running out of bedrooms. Oh, my gosh. That, what do you think? Is that what your parents say to you? Well, don't, like, we're, you're, you're, what do you want to do? Send us to the poor house? You never heard that? No, no. <laughs> I think it's because we grew up in the poor house. I, mean, I was just going to we say, it's because I was in the poor house. Yeah. You want to send me back upstairs to the poor house? Yeah. <laughs> my parents gave up. They're like, we are here. <laughs> we already reserved our rooms. Just on our way to the poor house. Gonna send yeah. you to the poor house. Leave know. that leave that fridge door open because we're <laughs> there's that nowhere else door to open. Go. It's yeah. always related to those those trickling things, you know. Gonna send me the to the poor house. This this kid eating all my food, 18 years old, gonna send me to the poor house. I don't know. People say yeah. it. It's one of those things. 
Listen, oh, Jen. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, if you don't want to send your child to the poorhouse, you'd rather send them to the fraternity or sorority house, <laughs> or maybe not one of those. Just maybe college. Just, just a dorm send room. Them to college. Send them to a yeah. Send them to an off-campus apartment because those mm. are very reasonably priced. Mm, yeesh. Yeah. So and don't send mm. yourself to the poorhouse because your kids are going to college. Oh, that was a better. That was a better segue. Yeah, you uh, made it. Okay, you did it. Uh, Either way, we'll get there. That is why we have brought on Abby Chow. She is the co-founder and COO of College Backer, which is a really affordable and uh, very, what is the word? Oh, I'm so pregnant. <laughs> You're not going to be able to use this for much longer. Like, no. eventually you won't be pregnant anymore. Then what? But yeah, but the, use it. Milk I'll that remember thing. remember words. You're, yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Re- rewind. She is the co-founder and COO of College Backer to talk about how to save for kids' college. And so she's going to walk us through different ways, how much we should be saving, and then also what College Backer does, but also if it's right for you, and maybe it's not right for you right now, but it's such a great program that most people will be able to use it. And so I'm super stoked about that. I'm very excited to open an account for Kai. And we've got a special offer for Frugal Friends listeners at the end. It's free money. So listen to the whole episode if you like free money. Let's get into the interview. Do it. Free money. Abby, thank you so much for being our guest on the Frugal Friends podcast. We're so stoked to have you. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Welcome. Yeah, I am super interested in college savings because I'm about to have a child that will hopefully one day like move out of my house and maybe maybe go to college. Maybe that's the way I get them out. So... <laughs> I'm very interested. Starting already. You want to get it out yes. of your womb and then out of your home <laughs> I and am, into college. I'm going, yes. <laughs> One after the other. I'm not wasting any time. <laughs> so this is why we're having you on right now for my selfish reasons. I'll, most of the episodes we have are for my benefit. <laughs> and our, I just our tag listeners along. already know that. Yeah. Our listeners already know that. <laughs> I know that I like really am interested in jumping the gun, but like, for normal people, when should you start saving for your kid's college education? Yeah, it's a great question. And I have two answers. One is a really specific answer. And the other one is sort of the cheesy answer. Uh, the cheesy answer, of course, is that it's never too early and it's never too late. So even before your kid has been born, um, you can start saving for college. And even if your kid is you know, 17 years old or 18 years old and about to go to college or in college, it's not too late to start. In fact, there are studies that show that even if the college fund is less than $500, it can make a kid three times more likely to start college and four times more likely to finish. Wow. So saving for college at any point is going to be really powerful for your kid. That being said, the really specific answer is that at College Backer, we found that at specific events, like the baby shower, the birthday, the holidays, those are great moments to start saving for college. So if you have the baby shower coming up, instead of toys or clothes, you can ask for college savings as a gift, or at least suggest it to the folks who might be coming as a gift idea. And that's an amazing way to get started. We have folks who, you know, just from a single birthday party are raising a few hundred dollars for their kid's college and add that up over 18 years plus, you know, growth in the market, that can be a really meaningful amount of money. Wow. I did not expect that answer. So this is so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Love having you on, Abby, not just for what you can give to us, but... <laughs> Jill, what answer, what answer did you expect? Well, I honestly expected more the side of start now, start early. And of course, that's great advice. But 
it's really freeing to hear you say it's never too late. Like I, I know a lot of people, I have friends with kids who are in high school and they're so disappointed that they did not set money aside for their kids and they feel like it's too late, you know, and they're so pining for, I wish I would have known these things when I was 20, 25. I wish I would have set it aside and almost just letting it go as if, well, I didn't, so now it's too late. But to hear you say, if your kid's 17 or 18, it's still not too late, or even if they're in college, I, I've never thought about that because even if they did take out loans, and maybe you're, you're going a different direction with this, but my mind is saying, even if they took out loans, they're not going to be paying that back until six months after they're out of college. So yeah, you kind of do still have four more years to help them along the way, which might help them to even complete college and make that investment worthwhile. So yeah, really excited to hear that answer from you. Thanks for sharing that, Abby. Yeah. And the psychological aspect of even having that $500 in there, mm-hmm. like that it makes a child more likely to start and finish. Like that's a cool fact. You know, my, my, my parents believe in me. It's not all there, but they've set this aside for me. So, okay, maybe this could be an option. Yeah. Maybe I'll just put $500 in is 529 and then be done with it. And call it a day. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I'm okay with that. That's amazing. Well, Abby, how much should someone plan to save and what are the options for where to save it? It's like, okay, I stash it away, but like it literally in the piggy bank that says like Sam's college fund or like where should they be putting it? (laughs) How much should they be planning to put away? Yeah. Yeah. So the the answer on this one is going to be different for every family and also depending on what your goals are as a family. And so for that, I would encourage folks to go to a place like collegebacker.com where we do have a calculator that can help you set those goals for yourself. So it depends on, you know, what kind of education you might see for your child uh, and what percentage of college you might think you'd like to save for, because there are other resources like scholarships and financial aid that will ultimately be part of that picture. Mm-hmm. But once you've decided on some amount to save for college, and frankly, I'll say that for most families, the amount that you'll save often depends more on where you are in terms of a family with your budget than perhaps what those projections might be. Mm-hmm. But once you've decided on the amount to save, it is a pretty important decision to decide where to put it. And most people make the mistake of just putting it in a checking or savings account. And Mm. I'll say, that's a great start. You know, (laughs) would much rather having you putting the money there than not saving it at all. But Mm. it leaves a lot of opportunity on the table because of course, when you put money into that savings account, it's not growing very quickly. And the cost of college, unfortunately, is growing quite quickly. It's Mm -hmm. expected to double again in the next 10 years. And so it's really important that you put your money in a place that it will grow. And so we often recommend a 529 plan. So this is a type of account that is specifically designed for education And it's an investment Mm -hmm. account, so your money will grow over time, and it grows tax-free with tax-free withdrawals as well. So that's a huge Mm -hmm. benefit for you as you're saving for college to make sure that growth is compounding on itself. Uh, There are other options out there, you know, uh, UGMA UPMAs, which are a type of trust, educational savings accounts, Coverdells. Um, But for various reasons, we generally don't recommend those because they can have other impacts on, you know, financial aid. They might have restrictions around it on income or the types of uh, things that you can spend it on. And so that um, we often find that the 529s are actually uh, the most flexible, yet also providing the benefits of the growth and minimizing financial aid impact as well. Yeah, I know that like the UTMAs and the UGMAs in particular, you don't have to use those for education purposes, but they do affect more so for the student, like if you're going for financial aid. Like you could think, oh, I'm going to put all this money in an UTMA, which UTMA is uniform gift or transfer to minors. And you could think you're doing this savvy thing and then it comes time to fill out the FAFSA and your student doesn't qualify for as many scholarships or as much financial aid because that brings up their net worth too high. Exactly. So for those types of trusts, they actually 
automatically are converted into the student's control, often at age 18 or 21. And so what that means is it's considered a student asset because the student has control of Mm. the funds. Whereas with a 529, you as the parent actually get to maintain control. And so that means that there is a much... Uh, lower financial aid impact. And it also means that you can make sure that, you know, your student isn't using it for spring break. (laughs) (laughs) Or a brand new car because mom, I need a brand new car to get to school. Mm -hmm. Duh. Exactly. (laughs) Thank you for choosing community college. Now mama's (laughs) going on vacation. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So we do have a specific question from our Frugal Friends community group on Facebook related to this. Jenna Lee says that she has $9,000 saved in her six-year-old's 529. And a college savings calculator recently said that she'd have to start putting away over $1,000 a month for the next 12 years to afford in-state tuition. Does that sound right? What are your thoughts on that? Of course, I can't speak to the specific school that she sure. might be uh, that she might be looking at, but I will say that even for in-state tuition, we are seeing uh, projections for pretty significant increases in in mm. prices overall. That being mm-hmm. said, again, families don't have to plan to save the entire tuition or the entire cost of college. There are other resources out there, of course, like scholarships and financial aid that can make up a portion, but particularly given our product at College Backer, we believe really strongly in the power of gifts from friends and family. So oftentimes when you're thinking about saving for college, you think about it on your own as if you're the only one who cares about your kid, but that's just not true. Um, And Mm. so we've seen the power of rallying friends and family around college savings and around, you know, a child's aspirations. And we find out that oftentimes grandma and grandpa really want to be part of the picture and they want to be involved and they can see how this is a really meaningful way to be involved in the kid's life. Yeah. That's also great if you're trying to practice a more minimalistic lifestyle. So at birthday parties, Mm. instead of just getting a lot of stuff, getting these gifts just sounds like a really, really great alternative. Totally. Mm. To be honest, half the time, I think the parents are just like, oh my God, thank God I don't have to fill my closets more with all this stuff. Like <laughs> thank that's God half that, the yeah. benefit of college back girl. Thank God the 529 doesn't make noise or have sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, This means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, Take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. Oh, it can be a great idea for people who want to give gifts, but 
Yeah. It's the long-term gift. It's the postponed gift mm-hmm. of education. And I think Jenna Lee's question also raises a good point that you can't or really shouldn't rely on the 0.01% or even 2.2% we're seeing like with high yield savings accounts right now because college is raising its tuition rates at way faster than the national inflation rate, which is 3%. So that's even more than a high yield savings account. So I think that's one of the benefits of the 529 is that you can't guarantee results in the market, but typically they're higher than 2.2%, especially over 18 years. Absolutely. So I think it's critical for folks to be thinking about investing their college savings And the fact that with a 529, you can do that tax-free and the growth is completely tax-free just makes it all the more powerful in keeping up with those college costs. So it's kind of similar to like a Roth IRA for like education. Okay. It's almost exactly the same tax structure, at least. So you're putting in post-tax money and the growth is tax-free. Sweet. So like, what are the other benefits of using a 529 plan to, to save? So one big one that I alluded to is the flexibility of the 529. Um, so there are some restrictions, of course, because it is designed on for education, but you can use it for a lot of different forms of education. So you are probably already thinking of undergraduate college, but you can also use it for graduate school. You can also use it for community college, many trade schools, even schools internationally. And the only rule there is that it has to be for a school that qualifies for federal financial student aid. So there's actually a very long list of different types of education that your kid can pursue. It can be in-state or out-of-state. So wherever their educational journey sort of takes them, you can support. Mm. And beyond that, it's also useful for a lot more than just tuition. So you can also spend 529 money on room and board, books, computers, other supplies. And so That means that even if your kid is brilliant and gets a full tuition scholarship, that 529 savings might be really useful for some of those other categories. Um, And lastly, in that scenario, if somebody does get a scholarship, then you can actually take the money out of the 529 without any penalties. So in that case, you really don't have to worry about oversaving for your brilliant child. Um, It's still (laughs) a great idea for you to be using a 529. Speaking to what you're talking about, a number of people in our Frugal Friends Facebook community group, they don't want to save in education-specific accounts because they're not sure if their kids will go to college or, as you mentioned, maybe they'll get scholarships. What does happen? You've described a little bit of what happens if they get scholarships, but if they don't go to college or any version of you know, secondary education, what happens with a 529 plan if it's not used? Yeah, so there are a few scenarios here. Um, First of all, I would say that the 529 never expires or there are no time limits on it. So Mm -hmm. if your student, you know, wants to take a a year or two between different types of education, that's totally fine. There isn't an end date for the efficacy of a 529. Mm -hmm. But if, Mm -hmm. you know, you do have a child who just decides that no, college is not right for me or any form of higher education is not right for me and I'm not going to need it at all, you are allowed to transfer the 529 to another member of the family. So let's say that was, Mm -hmm. you know, the first child. If the second child is in fact going to go to college, then you can transfer the funds to the second child. You could even transfer it to a cousin or even back to yourself if you want to pursue further education. So that's Mm -hmm. a great option too, to avoid any penalties or fees. Um, But if you do decide to say, go buy a car instead, um, then that is a non-qualified withdrawal. And then you would have to pay 10% penalty and taxes on the gains of the account. Okay. So yeah. So just like a Roth IRA, anything you put into there is after tax and you can withdraw it without penalty. Exactly. Um, But it's just the growth that you're paying penalty and tax on. Exactly. Cool. I mean, I figure you can also transfer it back to yourself and then wait till your kid has a kid and you have a grandchild and then you could transfer it to them too. So that would be another option. Yep. And you would utilize the same account if you had multiple children. Is that correct? Like if you 
had four kids that you're saving for? No. So we actually recommend having a separate 529 plan for each child. And there are two Mm -hmm. reasons for that. One is to make sure that the investment profile fits for that child. So oftentimes when the child is very young, you want to be a little bit more aggressive with the investment portfolio to maximize growth. And then as your child gets older, you want to be more conservative with it so that you know the money will be there when you need to pull it out to, to use it for education. The second reason is a little bit more idiosyncratic to us is that we want to make sure that each child has their own account so that when the birthdays roll around and they're receiving gifts directly for that child, you know exactly where it's going and for whom it's for. Mm, that way the first child doesn't decide they're going to an Ivy League school. <laughs> and so now <laughs> the last child has to go to community <laughs> college. Yes. Yeah. Since I am also a second child, I totally agree. <laughs> that is why we must have separate accounts. But you know what? If the older brother doesn't want to go, you can give me all the college savings. It's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You can benefit from it. Just don't steal from me. Exactly. <laughs> so one person can have multiple 529s then. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so as a parent, you can be the account owner of multiple 529s. And in fact, the same child can also have multiple 529s where that child is the beneficiary. Cool. So if you have four kids and they all don't want to go to school, you can just take all their money. All four of them. (laughs) (laughs) Mommy's going on vacation, kids. Vacation to graduate school. Yes, yes. Yes, of course. Hey, that could be. If you're doing it in Hawaii, why not? (laughs) Yeah, just graduate. Just, I mean, retire instead of graduate. Retire at university. Doesn't specify that it has to be in a place where it snows all the time. Correct. (laughs) Correct. And rains and is cold. (sighs) Anyhow, <laughs> speaking of vacationing in fun places, I was wondering and where doing you were taking fun snow things. and all those sad things because we <laughs> know because we're gonna circle it back around to some good stuff. It's time for the, the bill, bill of, of the, the week. week. This is the bill of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Today's Bill of the Week is brought to you by Zeta because Zeta helps you keep track of all the monetary bills so you never miss a one. And so today, Abby, we're going to invite you to share your bill of the week with us. So what will it be? So I've got a couple bills for you, and they're not the bills that you'd be thinking of, because Mm -hmm. I, of course, live in the 529 world, and 529s came into existence through bills, political bills. Yes. Whoa. Heck yeah, Abby. <laughs> I love it. So creative. It. Keep going. So of course, 529s initially were created through bills, um, but there's actually, it's actually been updated over time through additional bills as well. Um, right now, there's a bill out there that I'm quite excited about that could potentially expand 529s to being able to use 529s on student loans. And so that is not passed yet. So Mm -hmm. everyone stay tuned. But hopefully that gave you one more reason to actually pay attention to 529 News because I bet you weren't paying attention before. I mean, no, we weren't. No, I wasn't. (laughs) And I think I can speak for all of us. (laughs) Jill speaks for the entire community. And since you might not have been paying attention to 529 News before, I'll give you one more, which is Mm. in the 2017 tax bill, the 529s were actually expanded to K-12 tuition. And so that means if you are saving for your kids and you think that your kids might go to private school or Catholic school or something like that, you can also use a 529 for that purpose. That's awesome. So that also would come in handy if you were like transferring it to a grandchild because then you could just be like straight up, you didn't use this, so send your kid to private school maybe they'll (laughs) go to college one day yeah yeah that's 
was awesome. That's great. Thanks so much, Abby. Those are two really great bills and educational. Who doesn't want some education? <laughs> Not <that> they're <laughs> bill of the week. week. I love it. Thank yes. you. So staying on point. If you have a bill for us, whether it's a bill in Congress or maybe a bill who's hanging out in Congress, I don't know, your friend bill <laughs> who's passing bills, please. Who wishes they were in Congress. Right. Send it to us over at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us a voicemail. We love being surprised by your unique bills all the time. You should see our faces. We're so shocked and surprised <laughs> all the time. But we never screenshot them because I was saying before we started recording, I am very pregnant and very sweaty. And, and wearing a hat. And wearing so a hat. This is why we podcast. This is why we don't take video got a of face us. for podcasting right now. <laughs> but it would we would charge you, though, if you wanted to see video because it, it's extra to see Jen <laughs> right. sweaty and pregnant. Send me a send me a quarter <laughs> or a dollar. That's it. Such a high rate. All right. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late, never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. Yeah, we hear a lot about fully electric vehicles in Toyota. They got them with more on the way, I'm telling you. We also know a BEV is not for everyone. Whether it's because of cost, range, or if you're like Ray and you're going to start freaking out, oh no, I can't find a charging station when that battery gets real low. Yeah, plus the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter beyond zero. So Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants too. In the years ahead, trust me, it's happening, baby. The materials used to make just one long range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug in hybrids or 90 gas electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, or get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. Vroom, vroom. Now we're at the part of the show that's Jill's probably favorite part on the DL. Next best thing yeah. to Bill of the Week. It always follows the Bill of the Week, and it's the lightning, lightning round. round. <laughs> so... Abby, we just have a few more questions. We're super interested in College Backer, but I would really actually like to know first how you became passionate about helping people save for college and like, how did you get into this? Yeah, so my personal story is actually that when I was a kid, I was just randomly a big personal finance geek. And so I absorbed a ton of information and for a long time just kind of filed it away in my head and thought, oh, well, you know, this is an interesting topic for me. But then I went on to go and work in education. And when I was doing that work, I just saw how often kids weren't able to go to the school of their dream or even shoot for the schools of their dreams because of financial barriers. And so that's when I got really interested in trying to take down some of those barriers and make sure that, you know, every kid is able to shoot for for what they want. So what is College Backer? Can you tell us a little bit about that? What makes it unique? College Backer is the easiest way to save for college with help from family and friends. So basically, if you come to collegebacker.com, we'll very easily and very simply put you into a 529 plan and give you a custom link, like 
collegebacker.com slash Abby or your kid's name that you can share so that friends and family can give directly into the college fund uh, for a birthday or holiday or any other event like that. Yes, that's awesome. I am obsessed with this idea, honestly. But I know that it may not be right for everyone. So like who are the best candidates to open a 529 like specifically through College Backer? Yeah, so we find that um, our best uh, our best fit is with people who want a really simple common sense solution, especially for younger families, you know, that are early in the savings journey and who want to get the people around them involved, you know, want to share with aunts and uncles and grandparents and so on. Of course, you can use College Backer in single player mode too and just save on your own, but we really see the benefit through sharing that personal link and getting other people involved. Yeah. And I know for us in Florida, like we have, I mean, our 529 is actually like a prepaid college plan, so it's like not the best, but I can still, even though I live in Florida, I can still open a 529 in any other state. I can open it through College Backer and like benefit from the best states 529 for me. We don't have a state tax, so I don't have to worry about that. But Jill, you are in Pennsylvania and you guys do have a state tax, right? Thanks for rubbing it in, Jen. Sorry. <laughs> but, but I think you're in California, so we definitely have state taxes too. <laughs> yeah. But I think your state, And you can correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, Abby, but it does like it offers the state tax benefit for her in any 529. It doesn't have to just be Pennsylvania's 529. That's right. Not every state does that. So definitely check to make sure if you're in a state that you can get state tax benefits from like other states. 529s because there there are quite a few that do that. And then also the few states that don't have state tax represent. Yeah. So there are a couple different scenarios. Basically, if there are scenarios like Florida, where if there is no state tax, then of course you're free to choose whatever you like. Or in California, where there is state income tax, but there's still no benefit for choosing my specific 529 plan so I can choose whichever. Or Jill's example, where there is a state income tax benefit for investing in a 529, but it can be any state. And then some other states, like my home state of Illinois, where there is a state income tax benefit, but only for the Illinois plan. And so there are a bunch of these rules that can often be confusing for many families. Um, But if you go through the college backer process, we'll just go ahead and point out to you if there is a particular state income tax deduction or benefit in your state, and then you can make the best decision from there. Mm. So if there was a state that offered an incentive for investing in their own 529, would you say maybe like invest in that one, like kind of up to the minimum, and then you could still have like a college backer account for gifts from like friends and family and stuff? Exactly. So in those scenarios, it might make sense for you as the parent to be making contributions into that state plan so that you can get that tax deduction. But then for third parties, so the gifts from family and friends, usually the state income deduction, it either may not apply to them or maybe they just don't care about it because it's on you know, a $25 gift or something like that. And so the benefit of just getting those gifts of you know $25 here and there, all of a sudden you've raised a few hundred dollars is going to far outweigh the small tax deductions that you might be getting at the state level. Yeah, mm. that's awesome. I love it. So Abby, where can people find more about College Backer and decide if it's right for them? We are really excited to actually offer a $10 match for all the Frugal Friends listeners. So if you go to collegebacker.com slash frugal friends and open a college fund for your kid and put in at least $10, then we'll match with another $10 gift from College Backer and be sort of the first people on your kid's College Backer team. Yeah. The first people to invest in your child. That's so great. That's really standing behind what it is that you're all about. That's awesome. And I love the fees are super low. There's like no minimum. It's so great. Like sometimes you'll find to open a 529. There's like a $3,000 minimum. So I love that about College Backer. And I'll also just say that you can even get started before the kid is born. So that's something that we released recently. You can Mm -hmm. set everything up, claim your custom link for your future baby, share it at the, the baby shower, and then we'll help with the switch to the 
the newborn beneficiary when that happens. You hear that, Kai? You have to go to college. Nice. Get money. <laughs> get, mama's getting money. Dream big. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And, and then, then going, on, going vacation on vacation with the extra. <laughs> well, Abby, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all of this. I really hope that this inspires and like makes people feel safer to start saving for their mm-hmm. kids' college, especially in 529s and looking more deeply into that. And yeah, and also sharing it at birthday parties and baby showers, like get that clutter out of your house. Just take the money. Take the money. Seriously. (laughs) This is a frugal win on so many levels. Yes. Collegebacker.com slash frugal friends. Sign up for accounts for your children and get that $10 match because that's a free $10 that will grow over time. Do it. Thank you so much for hosting me today, guys. It was great. Thanks, Abby. That was amazing. I learned so much. I don't have kids. Uh, I don't plan to have kids, uh, but I still learn a lot. And I might start a 529 just for someone else's kid because it seems fun. And $10, I might make, like, I could put yeah, someone else is going to put kid. $10 in it. Yeah, I'll give it to yeah. Kai. Yeah, sounds great. We'll take it. We'll take your money for sure. Other Other cool things that we'll take is a book club. Yes. Right? Oh. We're still doing this thing. We still, we're fun. We're cool. We're hip. We do lots of stuff. And one of them is a book club. So mm. it's May. Welcome to May. We're, <laughs> we're in the middle of May. We're in the middle of May. <laughs> Welcome to the middle of May. Who's ever welcomed you to the middle of May? Don't you feel so welcomed into May? Yeah. And we're reading this month, The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist for this book club. Yes. And if you want a free copy, we are actually giving away one for every five reviews we receive this month. So to enter that drawing, leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, screenshot the review and send it to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And so we'll select one winner for every five reviews at the end of the month. And if you want to know an example of a helpful review... This one comes from Brooke Craven. It is five stars. It's not necessary, but it's yeah, helpful. helpful. It's helpful for me to know <laughs> it's that it's for five me. stars. And so she says, or he says, awesome podcast. Jen and Jill, hosts of the Frugal Friends podcast. Thanks for clarifying that. Highlights all aspects of money, investing, and more in this can't miss podcast. Yes. The hosts and expert guests offer insightful advice and information that is helpful to anyone that listens. Brooke, thank you for single handedly claiming us a can't miss podcast. It sounds I like love that. Sounds like movie critics, like in this can't miss. It sounds so legit. It sounds more legit than I'm making it sound. But thank you. That was a helpful review. It is one that would potentially lead you to winning a free book. So do that. Do that and keep doing that. But you've got to screenshot your review and email it to us. Yeah, that's how you enter to win is screenshotting it and emailing it to us. This was a really great episode. I know maybe not relevant for every single listener, But if you've got nieces, nephews, close friends, kids, this is a really great way to show your care. It's a very unique gift. And like I've been saying, this whole episode is way better than plastic stuff and things that make noises and sounds Mm -hmm. for birthdays and baby showers. It'll be the gift that keeps on giving when you invest in their education. And then they get educated and then they turn around and get a good job and then they pay for your vacations and, and dinners keep you out, out of the poor house. And they keep you out of the poor house, bringing it full circle. Jen, you say you're pregnant yes. and I do believe you, but sometimes <laughs> you are so on point with these things. I know. I know. I have my moments. Um, thank you for listening to this episode. We hope you loved it. We'll be back next week. I might have a baby. 
but you won't know that because we pre-recorded the episode. <laughs> you'll you'll know it if you're a friend on our Frugal Friends Facebook group, which you should be. Yes. Uh, join that thing. It is a private group. So you do have to like get inducted in. And it's a great induction with GIF pictures flying. And you're, you'll feel so welcomed. And you can ask us all the questions. And you can post all the answers. And do it. And then you'll know when Jen has her baby. Yes. So join our Frugal Friends community on Facebook. We'll see you later. See ya. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriani. I'm staring like I'm face to face with like a bunch of infant pajamas. Oh, right it doesn't now. make and you I'm, so excited. Like someday I'm going to wrap some horrified, little guy actually. in this. And there's going to be a real person filling that thing. And then you're going to bite him. Nope. <laughs> um, but I did see a five week old the other day and I was like, ah, it's too small. Can't oh, can't do it. Too you're small. not gonna think that when it's coming out your body. I know. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to birth one of those. But <laughs> I mean, taking care of it. Too small. Too too tiny. I can't. It, it is a little overwhelming how fragile they are. But then they get chunky, and you just wanna like it. All the pressure of the cuteness just goes to your jaw, and it just you can't Sounds handle painful. it. It sounds painful. Actually. Mm, or like I pull in my my lips and I bite the insides of my lips. Actually, every time I go to see my sister, she has four children. So I have all of those nieces and nephews. And I realize that I do this. I pull in my lips and I like bite them because I have the I have cute aggression and I don't know what <laughs> else to do with it. And I'm just like, mm. and so I literally <laughs> it's a real thing. And and so I wear away some of the skin on the inside of my mouth and I'm like, what's happening to me every time I come to Ohio? What's this? What's this thing? And I realize it's because I'm biting like all all of my desire to like bite their chubby little legs. Oh, my God. Goes right to my lips. Mind you, I will never actually bite them or harm them. They're just so cute. I don't know what to do with it. Eric is shaking his head at me because he's inserted uh, himself into this conversation. Guys, I just think, oh, they're so cute. Oh, you can't even. <laughs> I'll wait until your baby's three months and then I'll come out there and I'll like grab his little legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, there are people who understand this. Do you not get that? Do you not experience it? You don't want to like just sink your teeth in to your own self because they're so cute. No, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs> the people who get it really get it. And the people who don't think that the rest of us are crazy, but it's a real thing. And don't put me in prison. Okay, bye. Ow. Yeah, yeah. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be... A, an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.